What's going on guys? It's Drew Prof Monsters. Welcome back to another video. It's been a while and uh, today I'm going to be bringing you a what I found video. I guess you could say like a thrift haul video. I don't know. I found some really weird and interesting stuff, but that's actually really profitable and quite a few things that I've never picked up before because while I was out on this thrift trip, I was with my friend Matt Easy. Shout out Matt if you're watching this. And uh, we went thrifting about an hour and a half away from where we normally go. And so the first couple stores we went to weren't so hot. So I started looking up about everything I could get my hands on to see if there was anything that was profitable. And I found some really cool stuff. So I want to share it with you. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Okay, so I'm going to start off with more of like my bread and butter type items, things that I sell online almost daily. I obviously don't like picking up a lot of clothing anymore. If you guys follow me on Instagram uh, or watch a lot of my videos, you know that like I do sell a lot of clothing, but I'm trying to pick up less and less clothing as I'm trying to increase my average sale price. First off was two hats. I guess these aren't really clothing items, but this is a Florida Gators hat right here with brand new tags, top of the world tag, snapback hat in really good condition. This hat should fetch me at least $25, maybe even more since it's brand new with tags. I live in central Florida, so it should be pretty easy to sell, maybe even Facebook Marketplace. Next, uh, I picked up this hat, and these were both a dollar each, and this is a MFM multi-family or million family march from October 16th, the year 2000 in Washington, D.C. Now, the the multi or the million family march and the million woman march and like all these types of things were really popular, especially like with the rap tees and stuff that came out with these. So I kind of just bought this on a little bit of a hunch thinking that somebody who's interested in the rap tees and kind of collects the, you know, those march type, um, you know, like civil rights movements types of things uh, that they would really like this. So hopefully that does pretty well for a dollar. I wasn't going to leave it. First clothing piece of the day is going to be this North Face TKA 200 jacket. This is just like a little fleece, nothing crazy. I believe this is a woman's medium. Yeah, it's a woman's medium and you can see the North Face tag. It's a little bit of an older model, uh, but color is nice in very good condition. And the North Face is a great bolo brand, even though like spring is coming up and obviously summer soon, this may take a while to sell, but if I can get it listed really fast, I mean, as I'm making this video, Joey Bada Bing 22 is snowboarding in Colorado. So it's still cold in many places, just not in Florida, but I should be able to sell this pretty quickly for at least 25, maybe even 30 bucks. I paid up for it. I paid $8, but that's because the North Face sells really good. It's a Bolo brand. And uh, like I said, I was trying to buy some stuff that I wouldn't normally pay up for because I had to make this thrift trip worth it. Next up is a vintage cardigan. I've been having really good luck selling cardigans like you know, these pocket um, pocket cardigans and like grandpa style cardigans, I guess that's what I title them as grandpa cardigans. But this tag was really cool. It says Military Equipment Corporation of America. I didn't even look this one up because I got a really good price on it. It was $5 and I just recently sold a vintage blank cardigan for $50 on eBay. So it was worth the risk for me. The Military Equipment Corporation tag is really cool and it's got like these uh, little like straps up here. So maybe something worth looking at. Maybe not. Um, I'll throw some comps on the screen if I found anything right here. And uh, hopefully it was worth the pickup for five bucks. I'm normally a big proponent of looking up comps, but when it came to clothing, um, I've had my fair share of experience with them. Considering I've sold blank cardigans for $50, I felt like $5 wasn't that big of a risk. Next up is something I've never picked up before, and this was my first time. I paid $4.98 for it, which is a little more than I would normally pay, but this is a L.L. Bean two-layer river driver's shirt. Hopefully that zooms in for you or focuses, and you can see that tag right there. But these are actually a bolo. It's basically just a blank Henley, as you can see, but this specific Henley sells for anywhere from like $27 to $35. So I don't know why, uh, but when I looked it up, um, it's size XL, made in the USA. When I looked it up, it had great comps. $30 for a $5 piece of clothing is not bad, and the sell-through rate was awesome. I walked into a thrift store that Matt and I both were about to walk out empty-handed with nothing. It was just like a little mom-and-pop thrift store. I don't know what exactly it was. Maybe a church thrift store or something, but uh, I found this Da Vinci California button-down shirt. And normally I don't pick up button-down shirts or floral shirts anymore, but this one caught my eye on the shelf. It was... Um, $2, I believe, at this thrift store because they were like 25% off or $4, I think, $4. And the comps on this looked really good, like around 40 to 50 bucks. 
So I decided to pick that up and take a chance on it for $4. If you follow me on Instagram, I did a cop or drop on this. This was a Chaps uh, Polo Ralph Lauren. I guess it's just Chaps, not technically Polo Ralph Lauren, but same company. Uh, but this is a like red Harrington zip up jacket. And I've done pretty well with these. I've sold them anywhere from like $25 to $45. I paid up again for it. I paid $8, but that's because at this thrift store, I really didn't find anything except this jacket and one other item. So I decided to pick it up. I can still probably triple my money on that investment. Next up is a, another vintage cardigan. This is IZOD. This is a vintage IZOD. I believe it was made in the USA. Yeah, made in the USA, good size XL, very lightweight. Um, these things, again, like there's a really like nice color uh, crest on there, but these, these um, cardigans and vests have been doing really well for me, especially the vintage ones. Guys and girls are wearing them as like outerwear. It's kind of like hip, streetwear, modern-ish um, like combinations. And I don't know what gained them so much popularity, but they're selling really well for me. So I've been picking them up. If you see these at your thrift store and they're cheap, you should try giving them a chance. I don't know, they've been doing really well for me. So I haven't sold one for less than like 25 or 30 bucks. Next is three clothing items that we found at the very first thrift store we went to. This is a Harley Davidson like canvas button down um, or like button shirt, I guess you could say. Uh, the tag is like completely faded out. So I think it's a little more vintage. You even got like this little Harley insignia on the corduroy collar, which I thought was really nice. This is almost like a lightweight Carhartt style jacket with the canvas and Harley stuff is a great bolo. I paid $5 for that jacket. Next up, I thought this one was really cool uh, just because of the colorway was why I picked it up. You got a vintage 19 like 90s um, windbreaker. This is Clipper Bay made in Indonesia. So it's not made in the USA, but it's a full zip with just a really nice colorway. I feel like someone who has a nice pair of like Air Max 98s, you know, or something like that, Vapor Max or something that wants to match can buy the buy this and uh, look really cool wearing it. I think it's just a really cool piece. These sell really well on my Depop. I'll probably list it for like 30, 35 bucks. I paid $2. Okay, moving on to some shoe finds. I found these uh, Air Monarchs right here. Well, actually Matt found them and then he threw them to me because he didn't want them. They were in excellent condition on the bottom. For anybody who knows me, I actually like the Air Monarchs. I wear them, hashtag dad shoe, you know, but these are a cool colorway. I really like these ones and they were in pretty good condition for $8. I decided to pick those up. They're not going to be like a major grail seller or anything like that, but they'll bring me some decent profit. I found this pair of men's Chacos in like almost new condition. I mean, the bottoms are just immaculate. There's like no crust that I have to peel off of like the rubber where your foot goes. Everything is like really clean. So these were $12.96 and I think I can easily get 40 or 50 bucks for these Chacos. They're in amazing condition. I scooped a pair of silver Hirachis in excellent condition. These shoes always sell fast for me. They were $8.96. I don't know why every Goodwill prices stuff differently. You know, you would think that their prices would be like a flat $9.99 or $7.98 or whatever, but they price each shoe differently, which is crazy to me. I paid 10 bucks for these, but these should pull me at least $40 easily. I sell Hirachis all day for between $40 and $60, depending on the colorway, size, and condition. It's a pair of like Auburn colorway uh, Air Force Ones. These are a little bit bigger, a size 13, but they are like immaculate. Again, super clean, really good condition. These were $19.96, $19.96. I normally don't pay up for shoes like that. I'm pretty cheap when it comes to buying anything to resell for profit. And the sell through rate wasn't as great as I would like it to be. But because the only reason I bought these was because there was probably like 10 or 12 listed and only one sold, but there were no size 13s listed. So I figured I would pick up the size 13 and list them high like $89.99 and see if I can make some decent profit. Lastly for the shoes is this pair of Brooks Ghost 6. Now these are an older model. The Brooks Ghosts are at like I think an 11 or 12 at this point, maybe even higher. These were $8, but this is a bread and butter item. Again, Brooks Ghost, Brooks Glycerin, Brooks Adrenaline, and the GTS models. They all sell really fast. Brooks is kind of like Hoka. It's, it's got a really good following for it. And it was a nice colorway, like the blue and pink. These were $8, and I think I could probably flip them for about $30, $35. All right, this was at the last thrift store that we went to for the day. And uh, this is a Weed Eater 18 volt battery with the charger. And this was only $3.98, which is crazy because normally Goodwills tend to price these higher. 
This one doesn't have amazing comps, but for the price, I think I can flip it for about 30 bucks plus shipping. So for $4, I decided to pick it up. This is for like the electric weed heaters and stuff that you know you use to uh, take care of your lawn. All right, probably one of the cheapest items or the cheapest item I found today was this Calphalon uh, skillet. This is, I believe, a 10 inch skillet. Yeah, Calphalon is a great Bolo brand. You can see right there, C-A-L-P-H-A-L-O-N. This was $2.98 normally in my area. These are going for like $7.99 to $12.99. So for $3, I decided to pick it up. I should be able to pull a minimum of like 25 bucks out of this pot or this skillet. So I decided to pick it up. All right, I'm gonna move on to a few of the more obscure, weird type items that I picked up that I don't normally scoop when I'm at thrift stores, but the comps looked good and the prices were there. So let's check them out. First up is this Franklin Chef Vertisserie. It's a vertical rotisserie. And I mean, if you can look inside of that, you can see it is in like immaculate condition, very clean, just needs to be wiped down very minorly. And um, the whole store was having 50% off at the store I got this from. Uh, my buddy Matt actually got a pair of Sirwin Vega speakers and he paid $150 and I think he listed them for around a thousand. It was a crazy find, really good, really happy for him. I hope he sells them quick. Uh, but this right here has some pretty good comps as well. So they're selling for about 150 new. So I think I could pull about 80 bucks out of this used and I paid $8 for it or $7 and 50 cents because the tag was $15. Next is probably one of my favorite finds, something I don't normally pick up this Titleist golf bag. We walked into a, a humane society or habitat for humanity, like one of those types of thrift stores. And it was mostly furniture. And so we were about to leave and they had like a back area walked in right behind the door was this Titleist golf bag with a $5 price tag on it. And without even looking up comps, I decided to scoop it. And uh, I knew that I would be able to get at least 50 bucks for it. And I posted it on my Instagram story. If you didn't see that and someone reached out to me and said they sold the exact same golf bag for $125, uh, within a day of listing it. So I'm super pumped about this. It's in excellent condition. I don't even need to wipe it down or nothing. And I'm just really thrilled with this pickup for five bucks. I normally don't pick up golf bags cause I'm not into golf. That's more of like a hairy tornado alley. So, uh, but for five bucks, I was definitely going to pick it up and I needed a couple of fines to make up for the rest of the day. So yeah, a great pickup, maybe the most profitable thing I will get out of this thrift haul. Next, I put this on my Instagram as a cop or drop. This is a vintage 2000 uh, or 2001 Firestone Bigfoot monster truck poster. Now, again, I don't normally pick up posters because they're annoying to ship. They're really big and it's going to take a very specific buyer who likes monster trucks. But one of the reasons I picked this up was because it was autographed twice. I don't know if it's the same guy or if it's two different Bigfoot drivers, but it was autographed and I thought that was really cool. Maybe the Bigfoot driver, I have to look up who it was, but it was in this frame in really good condition. Maybe I'll take it out of the frame uh, when I ship it and put it in a mailing tube. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure how I'm going to do it yet, but I paid eight bucks for this. And there was only one other like monster truck poster listed for $39.99 plus shipping. So I know that I can at least start there since mine's autographed. I'll probably list it a little bit higher. Right now, the last item I found is actually three of them. And then on my way home the next day, there was a garage sale that I stopped at and I found another one for a dollar, which is weird because I've never seen one before until this thrift store. And this is actually probably the most profitable item of the day. It's these Aspen Vista back braces, mostly for like a lower cervical, um, or I'm not exactly hundred percent sure. I'll pop up a picture on the screen right here of the comps, but these Aspen back braces, I actually got three of them and there's two of them are a little different. I think where this back piece is, is either missing or it's just not there for that model. But I got three of these for $8 each. And then I found another one, uh, at a garage sale for a dollar. So that's crazy. There's, there's the other one right there. There's two, you can see the dollar price tag is still on that one. So there's two of them. And then there's the other two right there. So got four of these total and the comps are looking really good. Pre-owned possibly at the high point around $99 plus shipping. So I paid uh, $8 for three of them plus a dollar. So $25 into potentially $400 plus shipping. So that is a great, great pickup right there. These are things that 
if I was having a much better day thrifting and I had found a bunch of video games, a bunch of shoes, a bunch of like rare vintage t-shirts or something like that, I probably wouldn't have even looked on the aisle where these were laying uh, because there are some Vero things with medical equipment and stuff like that. I still have to do a little bit of research. These might be vero but there's a lot of solds on eBay. That doesn't necessarily mean it's okay to sell it. So that's why I'm throwing that in there. But for the price, I figured I would take the risk and um, I can always sell them locally on Facebook Marketplace or some or Mercari if I can't get away with selling them on eBay. So great pickups there though, I'm really happy. Unfortunately, I didn't find much more. My buddy Matt found a couple things. He found some uh, sealed video games and he found like a, a Panasonic Handycam. So he found some cool stuff too. So I'm really happy that both of us ended up getting stuff. So overall, not a bad thrift haul, not my best, but definitely decent profit. I'm really focusing on uh, quality versus quantity. Nowadays, I'm not going and buying like 40 pairs of shoes like I used to for $10 to sell them for 30. I'm looking for shoes that I can sell for $40 plus or higher and paying less than $10. I'm looking for hard goods like these rotisseries now and these back braces, um, pots and pans and golf bags, like all this random stuff that I may not have normally picked up either if the price wasn't right or if I was having a much better day thrifting. But there you have it. Let me know in the comment section what you think your best, my best find of the day was and let me know how your sourcing's been. Mine's been a little dry, so I'm happy I found something. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace, money!